Good afternoon. Welcome back to another video. Hope everyone has had a fantastic week watching Wimbledon so far. No major upsets yet in the men's draw. We've still got Zverev, Alcaraz, Djokovic, Sinner, who everyone's pre-tournament favourites in the draw, which should set us up for a fantastic second week. Just a couple of quick things before I go into my previews and predictions. I did plan on releasing this video a little bit earlier and also with full write-up previews on the slides. Uh, but with the men's draw going so late last night with the rain and also England playing in the Euros, it meant that I couldn't record this video until this morning while doing all my notes. So from the quarterfinal stage, I will have you know watched each player and do a full write-up of how I think the match will play out, as I did for the women's section. Unfortunately, I just haven't had time. And secondly, if you would care to subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. I do hope to work in tennis media one day, and I'm using this channel to sort of improve my tennis knowledge, improve my skills, my editing skills, presenting skills, and just build a portfolio of work and hopefully interview some players as well and shine some light on British tennis. So if you would care to subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. Right, so jumping into today's video, as I've said, we'll do more in-depth analysis in the quarterfinal stage onwards, which I'll be posting on my channel. But I'm going to just run through who I think will win each match with a little preview because there is eight matches to get through. First off, Novak Djokovic against Holger Rune. Well, Djokovic, I think, has done well to even be competing at Wimbledon when you consider he had knee surgery just a month ago. Has said himself that if it wasn't Wimbledon, any other tournament, he wouldn't be playing. I think the first few rounds were a case of just getting through and seeing how the knee felt. I don't think his movement was great in the first or second match. He looked like he was timing shots very late, particularly on the forehand, making quite a few uncharacteristic errors, which you can completely understand. Djokovic said himself that he feels that it's getting better with matches and the more time he spends on court, the better he feels. I think he's just having to adapt his footwork a little bit um, in terms of the slide and in which balls he chooses to really to really go for. Um, I think he's played well. I don't think he's played his best by any stretch, but we see that from Djokovic over the last few years, that he doesn't perhaps play his best tennis until the, the late stages are slammed. He sort of works his way in. I think Jake Fernley put on a hell of a show against him in the second round. He was unlucky not to take that to a fifth. Alexei Popperon last night took the first set and then Djokovic found his serve in return and really took over. Played a fantastic tie break to close the match out and save his legs from going to a fifth. So I think overall Djokovic, you could say he's played a, probably a six or seven out of ten, but that's become normal for Djokovic in terms that he works his way at the tournament. So now comes a real test in Holger Rune, who we've seen has had success in the last few years against Djokovic, more so on clear hard courts. In their head-to-heads, it's 3-2 to Djokovic, but both players have won sets in every match. They've all been very, very close. So this is a decent matchup for Rune, and he's playing him at a good time with Djokovic still. Got a little bit uncertainty, obviously, over the knee injury. Rune, I don't think is the most accomplished on grass. You can see if you've been the results there. He hasn't exactly cruised through a draw that you would favour him with. Against Hallies, he was two sets down. So you've got to give him immense credit for finding the energy and determination and problem solving skills to be able to turn that one around. Hallies is a huge server, very good on grass. So for, for Rune to win that matchup is actually a good win for him. How much that's taken out the legs will remain to be seen because it was a long one. Um, obviously, winning two tie breaks, then dominating this final set. This is a really tough one to call. Um, as I said, I don't think Djokovic has been in great form throughout 2024, yet to reach a final. The injury is obviously still a worry when he comes up against the top players. Rune has beat Djokovic twice, um, so isn't exactly unfazed by Djokovic. Knows he can beat them. Um, I think this is, is, is a very close match and one that would be you know, very telling in terms of whether Djokovic can go on and win an eighth Wimbledon title. I am going to pick Djokovic just because it's on grass. I don't think it's Rune's strongest surface by any stretch. And I think Djokovic is a little bit more experienced of, you know, winning grass court matches and winning titles at Wimbledon might have, might be the deciding factor. I think we'll see sets go to 4-4, four, 5-5, four, five, five, tie breaks even. And Djokovic might just be able to come up with that little bit of magic as we see Djokovic do throughout the years to to turn sets in his side in his favour. So I'm gonna go Djokovic to win in four sets. Moving on now to Ben Shelton against Yannick Sinner. And Yannick Sinner so far has looked very, very strong. For me, the best player in the draw. He didn't come to Wimbledon in 
the best form or fitness situation. You know, he's had issues with his hip. We saw him cramp with the, the French Open in the semi final against Alcaraz when he led, and then ultimately got beaten five. And I think there was a little bit of a question of whether Senna could really go deep in this tournament, but he's passed with flying colours so far. That win over Matteo Berrettini is very underrated, although Berrettini had spent a lot of time out injured. He had been to the final in Stuttgart before Wimbledon, and we know there's been a preview Wimbledon finalist. He's a player that is brilliant on the grass, Berrettini. He's got that fantastic serve and forehand, but also a wicked backhand slice. And I think, you know, Berrettini had nothing to lose in that matchup with it being a second round and he'd been out for so long. And I think Sinner overcame that. You then look at Sinner's third round match against Kesmanovic, which is a matchup that, of course, you'd expect Sinner to win. But in the manner he did was just devastating the way he served, the backhand down the line, the forehand, the net play. There wasn't one bit of Sinner's game that was ever in any doubt in that match. It was such a clinical brilliant performance that must give him huge amounts of confidence moving on in the draw and I think out of him and Alcaraz who are probably the two favourites I think Sin has definitely performed the better so far uh, but that is probably meaningless when they inevitably meet each other in the semi-final moving on to Ben Shelton now and I haven't seen a great amount of Ben Shelton being perfectly honest um, I watched him in his first hour match and then I watched him again Shapovalov and I think he's a player that is really slept on. And I will make this bold prediction. I think he can win Wimbledon one day. I was really surprised by the variety he's got, that he's got. I think he's a player that makes very few unforced errors. He's technically and tactically excellent, which is a thing that I don't see very often in young players. Um, you know, his dad was a player that reached the fourth round of Wimbledon 30 years ago. He's obviously repeated that feat, which is such a wonderful story for the sport. But his technique on all of his shots is so sound for a player of his age. I think tactically, he's so good. Um, you very see him. You very rarely see him play the wrong shot. Um, he's very good in the open court. His serve is absolutely huge. Um, you know, he served the biggest serve ever at Wimbledon early this week, 153 mile an hour. Also, the fifth fastest ATP serve ever recorded. Um, he's very competent around the net. I think he's got very good hands for a player of his size. His forehand is a serious weapon. Um, you know, his backhand is solid enough. I think it can improve over the years, but I think his potential is crazy high. I was very, very impressed, and I didn't realise how good Ben Shelton actually was. You know, I've, I've seen, obviously, highlights of Ben Shelton. I've seen some of his matches at the US Open, you know, when he broke through against, and he got bit off Djokovic in the semi final. Um, but I was surprised how accomplished and solid he was on grass. It was a great win against Shapovalov, a match that I thoroughly enjoyed watching. I thought it was a great matchup. Both players turned up. Um, it was a good battle between two left-handers, but I think Ben Shelton's a serious, serious talent and could go a long way um, and certainly you know, become the next player to challenge the likes of Sinner and Alcaraz for major titles. I did actually want to predict Shelton to win this one um, and go a little bit out of the blue. But when I saw the way Sinner performed against Kesmanovic, you see, you know, the fact that Sinner has been the best player in the world in the past 18 months consistently. And Shelton has played a lot of tennis, you know, two five setters against Harris and Shapovalov might have taken a little bit out the legs. But I really think Shelton can make this close. You know, if he can win the first set, take it to tie breaks with that serve that he's got, he's very capable of winning this. And I'm going to go Sinner in four and be a little bit boring, but. Ben Shelton is a serious talent and I wouldn't be too surprised if he actually won this in four or five. Moving on now to Daniel Medvedev against Grigor Dimitrov and you know Medvedev hasn't had a lot of success at Wimbledon in the past it doesn't particularly surprise me I don't think it's a it's a surface that suits Medvedev at all um, he's not particularly great around the net he doesn't really like coming into the court and hitting clean winners he loves being at the back of the court, defending, counter punching, throwing up different variety, different height spins. Um, he's brilliant on a hard court, not so great on grass. I also, you know, it's it's knowledge that Medvedev isn't technically the greatest. He doesn't look the most amazing player when he plays the forehand and backhand, but it's effective. And a player like Dimitrov, this is a match of two two tails really, because you've got Medvedev who's very, very solid mentally most of the time. We know he's won Grand Slams. Dimitrov's a player that, on paper and technically and tactically, should win this matchup. 
you know, he's got the perfect game for Grasme. Look at Dimitrov, who's serving very well, which is a difference, I feel, this year for Dimitrov. Um, the backhand is so accomplished and he's got so much variety on that shot with the backhand down the line. He's got a great backhand slice. Um, he's got great shot, great drop shots. He's very strong around the net. This is a match that Dimitrov should be winning. But then again, we've said that a lot about Dimitrov over the years and he just fails to live up the expectations. He was two sets down in the second round, but managed to dig it out. Got a good win over Monfils in straight sets. You can see the head to head there. Medvedev leads 7 3. I am going to trust Dimitrov because I just think if you watch these two players on grass, then Dimitrov should win. As I said, technically, he's so much better, I feel, than Medvedev on grass. He's got the weapons to win on grass. Um, and I feel like if Dimitrov turns up and plays 100% to his best ability, then I think you can extract enough Emerson errors from Medvedev and throw up enough different variations to just disrupt the rhythm of Medvedev and the way Dimitrov's serving will allow him to dictate a lot of rallies, get into the you know, service box around the net and really power forehands and backhands down the line and break down the defences of Medvedev. So I'm going to go Dimitrov to win this one in four sets. Next up, Carlos Alcaraz and Hugo Umber and this sounds very harsh, but I don't think Alcaraz has played his best tennis at all in 2024, which sounds, as I say, harsh when you consider he's won the French Open, he's reached the fourth round of Wimbledon. And it's very difficult to criticise a player that's 20 year old and already won three Grand Slam titles. He's obviously a phenomenal, phenomenal talent, and he'll go down as probably one of the greatest players to pick up a racket when he when he hangs it up in 20 years' time. But um Alcaraz has just been guilty this week of losing concentration. And I think we've seen that at the French Open as well when, you know, Sinner was the better player in that match until he started to cramp. And then Alcaraz took over in the French Open final against Verev. He was leading in the third set and threw it away. And Verev, in my opinion, should have went on to win that. I think one thing you really have to give Alcaraz credit for at such a young age is how well he plays under pressure and how well he plays when he needs to. Um, against Francis Tiafo, you know, two sets to one down. I think he was love 30 at 4 4, and he, you know, he won that service game. He played an amazing tie break and then dominated the, the last set. So when the chips are really down, when Alcaraz really needs to concentrate, whether it's in a tie break or whether he's losing a set that he needs to win, he seems to really turn it on and find his best tennis in the biggest moments. And that's something we've seen from Federer and Nadal and Djokovic and why they've won so many titles. Alcaraz seems to have that trait already where he, he seems to know when he needs to turn it on and play uh, his best tennis and he's able to do that. And that's such an important thing to, to have up, it up your sleeve, uh, particularly when you're not playing your best tennis, which I don't think Alcaraz is. We've seen him make a lot of forehand errors uh, this tournament already, which is unlike him. Humber has had some very good wins this week against Brandon Nakashima, Shevchenko, Zanchub. I think Humber is just one of those players that's very solid. He's top 30 player, he's good to watch. He doesn't really make a lot of unforced errors, but he doesn't have one particular great weapon that can see him beat Nicolas Alcaraz, in my opinion. As I've said, he's very solid. He's done well to get to this stage. He fully deserves to have his place in the draw. But I don't think there's somewhere something... He doesn't have like an amazing backhand, a forehand, where he could really beat Alcaraz down for three or four or five sets. So I'm going to pick Alcaraz to really start and find his best tennis moving on to the last 16, quarter-final, semi-final stage, which he'll love to see. Uh, and I'm going to go out Raz to put in a clinical performance and win this one in three sets. Moving on now to Zverev and Fritz. And this is probably the hardest one to call in the last 16, in my opinion. They've both enjoyed very good years so far. Zverev obviously reaching the French Open final and winning in Rome. I was lucky enough to watch him in Rome a couple of times live and I was amazed at you know, just how hard Zverev hits the ball. He served as such a huge weapon. He fully deserved that title. He came through Wimbledon without dropping a set, which I think is very important. We haven't seen Zverev have a lot of success in the grass over the past few years for whatever reason. He's often gone out very early to players that he should be beaten. Some of the sits a pass, which we saw again. Um, but Zverev beating Nori in straight sets is an underrated win. You know, we've seen Nori get the semi-final Wimbledon. He's very accomplished on the grass, being a Brit. He's got the support of the British crowd. And I think for Zverev to come through that in straight sets is a real signal that he's starting to turn 
his form around on grass and he's transforming his form from clay onto the grass and that makes him a huge danger in the draw with the way he's playing and serving and hitting winners. Taylor Fritz is very comfortable on the grass, you know, only dropped one set so far, got a great win over Alejandro Tabilo, who we've seen have a, have a breakout year. This one's very tough to call. I don't think we're going to see many breaks to serve with the way they're both serving, attacking the net, hitting clean winners. They're both very confident, full um, in good form. And they know each other very well. You know, as very early to close, hit the head 5-3. I'm predicting tie breaks, 5-5, five, five, one break to serve. I'm going to just go as very in four sets because he's won a title in Rome recently. He's beaten the French Open final. He's got a little bit more experience in Grand Slams of getting to the latter stages. Uh, I'm going to go as far as in four sets in that one, but I think it'll be a very, very close match, and it wouldn't surprise me if Fritz won that one. Next up is Tommy Paul against Bautista Agut, and Tommy Paul's had a very good year. You know, won Queens. He's now at the fourth line of Wimbledon. We saw last year Alcaraz go back to back. Could he repeat that feat for the Americans? And I'm surprised his results so far. Tommy Paul, he hasn't exactly lit the tournament alight like I expected him. And you know, I expected him to cruise through what was a what was a good draw for him, but he got took to five sets in the second round, also dropped a set in the opener, but got a good win against Alexander Bublik, who is a very strong service at the come set one's three sets. Might just mean that Paul's found his form at Wimbledon now, he's settled into the tournament. Bautista, I think you've got to give immense credit to getting to this stage. You know, he's 36 year old. His form's dropped off over the last few years after being such an unbelievable competitor for tennis. He's actually come through a very tough draw as well. Lorenzo Sinego's very suited to the grass, got a great serve, good weapons. Fabio Fanini had a very good run in Mallorca. He came through that one in an absolute thrilling five step finish. And for a player at 36 year old, you know, still doing the Grand Slam stage as Bautista got days, you've got to give him immense credit. And this will not be easy for Tommy Paul. Um, Bautista got to play that, has got a lot of variety, defends incredibly well. He's a very good counter puncher, he gets lots of balls back in court. Um, you know, he's he trusts his game. And Paul is going to have to play well to come through this one. You know, Bautista got to knock some good players out so far. He's very battle hardened, we know how fit and durable he is. Um, but I think Tommy Paul. Having won a Queen's title last week, it's going to be a tough one for Bautista Good to hold off his serve and forehand. And I think the grass is a great matchup in this one for Paul. And I'm going to go Tommy Paul to win in four sets. Next up, Lorenzo Mossetti against Perry Card. And Mossetti is a player, when I watched him a few years ago, I thought could break through and potentially challenge for majors, but he hasn't really kicked on. I don't think he's played particularly well this Wimbledon yet. I know he's reached the fourth round, which is a good achievement, but he's had a very nice draw. Lestien, Dardery and Comisana. Drop sets in all those matches. Got took to five against Dardery. Could have easily lost that one. And Mercedes a player that I think is trying to adapt to the grass. You can see him coming into the net more, but he does make a lot of errors around the net. I don't think he's got good enough net player to, to get far in this draw. He also hasn't got the, the best of serves, in my opinion. I think he's a player that, you know, he's got a lot of natural talent. Um, I could see him improving in the future, but just needs to improve around the net, improve his serve, and I think that'll, you know, allow him to win a few more free points. Um, but at the moment, Perry Card, who is a player that I'd never seen play before in Wimbledon, beat Sebastian Corder, who was an outside pick of mine to win this title um, in a thrilling match with four tie breaks, then Nishioka and Rusevori, who knocked out to pass in the previous round. Perry Card served over 100 aces in three matches. You know, he served 51 aces against Sebastian Corda. That is a huge up and down on grass. If you can serve like that, so many aces and the ability to get into the net when they are returned, he can rattle through games in double quick time. And I think Perry Carr will probably be the underdog in many people's eyes in this one, but I think he'll win this match pretty comfortably. As I said, I don't think Mr. is a great list around the net. I don't think he's got the greatest of serves. He's made a lot of unforced errors. He's perhaps lucky to even be in the fourth round with the way he's played. Um, Perry Card, on the other hand, may not be the greatest returner, may not be the greatest when the rallies are extended, which is perhaps the route that Mr. can go down. But I think his serve and forehand are going to be huge weapons and he's going to break down the defences and miss enough times to come out in this one victorious. And I'm going to go for Perry Card to win this one in four sets. Finally, Arthur Feast against Alex Dimino. 
so Arthur Feast, I watched him for the first time on grass against Hubert Her catch in the second round. Her catch was many people's win more than picks this year. He's got obviously that huge serve, huge forehand, very good backhand. He's very suited to the grass. And considering he's only 20 and he's got very little experience on the grass, I was very, very impressed. You know, he dominated her catch at times during that match, which is no easy feat. Um, I think it could be the start of something special for Arthur Feast, and we're going to see a very, very good play in years to come. Um, came through against her, her catch 7 6 6 4 2 6, and then her catch got injured on match point in the decider and actually retired during the tie break, which was a shame to see. It would have been great to see if it's set in that one, but Feast already deserved that match. And to come through against her catch on grass is, as I say, a very, very good win for a 20 year old. He's got great variety on the backhand, um, very good around the net, got a great serve, looks to dictate rallies, get on the front foot. And as I've said, he dominated a lot of those rallies with her catch, which was unexpected. Alex Dimonor, on the other hand, is a player we've seen around the top 10, reaching last stage of tournaments for a good couple of years now. 7-6, seven, 7-6, six, seven, six, seven, six against Duckworth in the first round, got a great matchup against Jean Munar, who is not at home on the grass in the second round, and got a walkover in the third round against Lucas Puy. So I haven't seen a great deal of Dimonor so far in this tournament, truth be told. Um, I do think he's very suited to the grass with his speed, his athleticism, his firepower, his counter-punching ability. Dimonor is a very good player on the grass, and this winner of this tie will face the winner of Holger Rune against Novak Djokovic, which they're going to be fantastic matchups. whoever gets through from those two matches. Arthur Feast has actually lead the head-to-head 1-0. -head and just some how impressed I was from watching Feast against her catch. I'm going to predict him want to win this one in four set, which will be a slight upset. Um, but he's a player that looks immediately at home on the grass. And for 20, year, 20 years old, I think he's such an exciting talent. It's a match I'm actually thoroughly look, looking forward to watching. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you do want to leave your comments of how you think the men's draw is going so far, who you think will win the last 16, who you think will win the title, that would be greatly appreciated. I do always enjoy reading those. If you could subscribe, as I mentioned at the start of the video, it would be a huge help. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.